everybody, Coach Dan from Triple Fitness back with another video for you. So today I want to talk about something, I'm going to call it moving in a healthy direction, okay? So this uh, was something that came up, um, and it comes up regularly by the way, but it really came up in our fall back in the fitness program that's running as I'm filming this. Um, and really what we're talking about is the why we eat. So I think it's fair to say that most people know uh, what it means to eat healthy, at least kind of in a general sense, right? And I think the majority of people know that eating things like processed foods, packaged foods, fast foods, not as healthy as eating, say, uh, lean proteins, healthy fats, fruits, vegetables, and so on and so forth. I think most people know that. And I think it's fair to say that most people know that, you know, consuming things like the the sh the super uh, su that's pretty damn fast super sugary stuff you know sodas um, some of the coffees that are out there um, you know that kind of stuff are not as healthy as drinking say water right and and I think it's also fair to say that most people know that when they go out to eat stuffing themselves to the point they can hardly move afterwards and and then having dessert is probably not as good a thing or as healthy a thing as eating a home cooked meal that's made with fresh ingredients and stopping when you're full, right? Um, I think it's all fair, fair to say that everybody knows that, right? So why don't we eat healthy? One of the most common things people will say to me is, I know how to eat right, I just don't do it. And I can't tell you the number of times I've heard that sentence to the point that um, I've almost become immune to it. I'm not, but I, I, I have because I know that when people are saying that, they're kind of making an excuse, right? And I'm not faulting from them for that. I think that's kind of where I want to go with this video, is delve into that a little bit. So I, it's fair to say, again, that you know, eating healthier or eating better isn't really because you don't know what you're doing or a lack of information. If anything, it's probably you got too much information. You know, most people know, in quotes, enough to move the needle in a healthier direction. And a lot of times they'll make attempts at it often falling back. So really when it comes down to it, if knowledge was the only thing that was needed, uh, we'd be doing it, right? We'd be um, following along by eating less and moving more and eating real food, not the processed garbage that is the sad standard American diet. Um, and, and the reality is that we don't understand what eating means, right? What f ingesting food or liquid is is not about how we feel uh, it really what it is is we're just fueling our body and unfortunately we've moved away from fueling our body into uh, feeding our mind I'll call it or more precisely even probably even better way to put it is feeding our heart what I'm talking about is emotions here okay look guys most people store enough food quotes um, in their body in the form of fat to give their bodies enough energy to survive for weeks um, you know we're, we, what we're talking about is when we want to feed our body or fuel our body what we're trying to do is feed or give ourselves the energy to fuel our metabolic uh, processes things like our heartbeat breathing our brain so on and so forth but because we eat so much we store it as fat because that's what the body's doing um, you know, we aren't fueling our bodies, we're fueling our emotions. That's where I'm going with it. And the truth is we eat for many reasons, many, many reasons, other than that metabolic need, if you will. And a big one is that in a lot of respects, food is a coping mechanism for a lot of people. In fact, I would venture to say most people watching this. And what I did in the group is I did a video with them kind of talking about this, and I got thinking about it afterwards, and I said, geez, you know, this is so important. I need to share it with everybody. So do a separate video for you guys. And really what I want to do is talk about how do you change that, right? If we want to change our eating habits, if we want to fuel our bodies and not fuel our emotions, if you will, uh, we need to find new and healthier ways to cope. So I have put a list together. I'm just going to kind of run through it. And these are by not, <laughs> this is by all means not a comprehensive, complete list. But it's the ones that kind of came to my mind and the ones that I know are the triggers for most people. And really the first step in all this is is understanding how and why we use food to cope, right? Uh, so here's just some common ones. Probably the most 
frequent I hear from people is stress eating. You know, uh, we get stressed, we have a bad day at work, uh, we have a fight with our spouse, whatever it might be, we, we turn to comfort foods, whatever those might be for us, um, to kind of cope, right? And I get it, we all do it, I've done it many times, and, but the trick is kind of learning how to cope with that or manage it so that you don't stress eat. Um, easier said than done, freely admit, okay? First you gotta identify that it's the stress that's causing you to eat, but when you do, you can do things like meditation. Um, mine is yoga and meditation. That's why, you know, if I feel stressed, rather than go to the cupboard to grab chips or whatever, uh, I kind of take a, I call it a 10 minute time out. Um, I just kind of close my eyes and try and relax. And more often than not, I don't feel craving for food after that. Um, taking a walk is a good option. Simple breathing exercises is something that I do also, especially at work. If I'm having a stressful day at work, which is not often, uh, I love what I do. Um, but if I'm having a stressful day, I just close my eyes and do some deep breathing. You'd be amazed what that can accomplish. And that will prevent you from stress eating. Uh, kind of along with that is emotional eating. And so a lot of people equate the two, but they're somewhat different. When I'm talking about emotional eating, I'm talking about when we're sad or depressed. Uh, you know, the, the kind of the, the funny stereotypical one is, you know, uh, ladies after a breakup, you reach for pint of ice cream and eat it, right? I think, you know, it's, it's kind of funny, but it does happen. Um, it's really, we're trying to use food to pick us up. And there is a scientific reason behind that, right? We, we, we reach for foods, and if you notice, a lot of times it's sugary foods because the sugar gets into our bloodstream and... Um, it releases the feel-good hormones in our brain, the serotonin, the dopamine, and so on and so forth. I don't want to get into the science and stuff of it because most of you don't care, but that's the reason why, all right? Um, so what can you do instead of using ice cream to try and boost yourself? Well, best thing I can think of is call a friend. Um, if you're struggling with something, reach out to somebody, friend, family member, whoever. Someone that will just listen to you. That'll, you know, if you're sad or depressed, they'll let you get it out. Um, in an extreme case, you maybe need to talk to a therapist. And if you do, that's okay. I've used them in the past. Um, and I don't feel bad that I did, nor should you or anyone. Um, and similar to that, one that I don't do often, but um, I know many people do, is journaling. Sit down and write down what you're feeling. You'd be amazed at how that processes it out of the body. But again, you want to kind of change from using food to try and comfort you, which it won't to reaching out to other sources. Um, along those lines, and one that I've talked about with many people, and one that was a trigger for me at many times, is reward, the opposite of it. So um, think about it. I talk about it all the time, is when I was younger, uh, I was rewarded with food, okay? Uh, if I had a really good report card, I got taken to McDonald's. If I, you know, had success on a ball field, which, you know, I, not to toot my own horn, but I didn't do too bad, we would go for ice cream afterward. So I equated success or being good at something with food, okay? And really what you wanna do is start thinking about it in other terms. When I work with people individually, especially with nutrition or weight loss coaching, um, we'd like to set up a reward system. So if a person wants to lose, say, 50 pounds, I don't want them focusing on 50, I just want them focusing on losing 10. Just lose 10 for now, but give yourself a reward afterward. And I'll usually say to them, what do you think a reward should be? And more often than not, they go right to food. No, 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 guys. We don't want it to be food. We're just triggering and rewarding ourselves with food. That, that, you got to break that cycle. So it might be that if you lose 10 pounds or go down a couple dress sizes or whatever it is that your goal, that you're going to go buy a new dress, for example. Or you're going to, I always say, go out for a movie date or whatever. All right, Just don't have it involve food. Um, and another one along those lines where food comes into play is, is social reasons, right? It's when we gather together, which many of us do uh, frequently, right? And we're talking holidays, barbecues, just family get-togethers, whatever it might be. Um, if you think about it, they always gather or revolve around food, you know, bring a dish, go out to dinner, or whatever it might be, right? And, and again, what we're doing is we're, we're not getting together for the people, which is the real reason we should be doing. We should be focusing on reaching out to each other personally. 
we're, we're getting together for food. And, you know, that's the way to break that one, guys. It's not focus on the food, focus on the people. So if there, you're at a gathering, say, and everybody's brought a dish, don't hang out by the food. Go to another area. Talk with people. Look them in the eye. Put the damn phones away. All right? Um, along similar lines is boredom. Okay? Um, think about it. how many times have you sat down on the couch, turned on the TV, and said, eh, I'll have a little something, you grab a bag of chips, you open it up, and next thing you know, that entire bag of chips is gone. Uh, that's boredom or mindless eating. I would kind of dovetail the two of them together. Or, you know, you're, you're standing around, you don't know what to do, and next thing you know, you find yourself in the kitchen looking in the fridge. That's boredom eating. Look, there's a, I think you guys get it, right? So what you want to do is think of other ways to kind of busy yourself, if you will. And I kind of alluded to some of them earlier. Go for a walk, meditate, read a book, so on and so forth. You know, distract yourself. That's where I'm going with it. Uh, another one that's not too common, but it does pop up, is there's people that anger eat or angry eat. Um, you know, we get into a fight with our spouse. We get into an argument with whomever, and we reach for food. And what happens when we do that? More often than not, when I run across that situation, uh, I find that it makes people feel really frustrated, even more angry, um, and they feel guilty about it, right? So what you want to do is, look, we all get angry from time to time. That's inevitable. It's how do we break ourselves or work around reaching for food when we're angry? How can we deal with or get rid of that frustration without trying to do it through food, okay? Uh, the opposite side of that, I would say, is pleasure, right? Um, you know, I kind of alluded to it with the reward, but what I'm talking about is, you know, are there healthier ways to find pleasure in life instead of food? You know, try not to find happiness through food, I guess is what I'm saying. You know, um, where can we find that? And, and it kind of goes together. That, that's true emotional eating. We try to make ourselves happier or break anger or sadness through food. Um, easier said than done, let's be honest, but if you can do that, you'll go a long way towards achieving your results. And finally, the last one I'm just going to throw out there that I think is important is many, 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 many people equate food with love. Um, and usually it's learned at a very, very early age. Um, parents, if you have younger kids and your tendency is to say to them, I love you, Johnny or Jane, here have a cookie, or... Um, you equate taking them out to, like my case, a fast food restaurant, to reward them and show your love for them, if you get where I'm going with that. You're trying to, maybe not consciously, because I don't think anybody deliberately does it, but you're subconsciously substituting love with food. And, you know, what, else, what you want to do is find other ways to do that. Um, and I will tell you, having talked with many, many younger kids, because I've trained them in the past, one thing that they want more than anything else is attention. So uh, they don't care about food. They really don't. So kind of think about that. It's a tough one to kind of analyze if, if that's you or if you've been that child. And, you know, that becomes ingrained in your life. It's very, very hard to break. You equate love with food. Just a few things to think about. Hey, let me know in the comments below what you think. Uh, I'd love to hear them. Uh, maybe some of you've got some that I don't have. Anyway, till next time, Coach Dan, have an awesome day.